Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie, a we of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie, a we Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with a blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed. Expect to grow. Expect the ultimate life. My subject today is settle matters with it quickly. Settle matters with it quickly. You discover a lot about people when you go through hardship. It brings us to our senses. It proves our closest relationship. Number three, it makes us pray and trust God more intensely. There's nothing like adversity to get you on your knees. It drives you to a place where you realize that on your own, you can do this. This thing is bigger than you. It's good for us to be people who end up in prayer who end up depending more intensely on God. The apostle uh, Paul was a great man. He was a strong man. He was a man who walked with God and gave his all. He was diligent in his calling, yet he had adversity. And, and you know what? God allows it because it brings us closer to him. I've always found out that in the comfortable times, we get lazy. We take it easy. We cruise. But when adversity comes, you get close to God. You find you draw near to God when you are going through hardship. The Apostle Paul here is speaking about his experiences. And remember, committed and loyal people will go through adversity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. He says, we, we, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we, we, dis, we despaired of life itself. Notice what he said. He said our ability was limited. Look at verse 9. He says, indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Anyone listening to me today feeling the same way? Look at verse 10. He says, He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver or to deliver us on him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us when someone says they've been in uh, in deadly peril that means I've been in in deep trouble I've been in deep yoga I've discovered there are three things that happens when you draw near to God and when you go through hardship that he does in your life number one it brings you to a place of humility. I'm nothing. I need God. I might be strong. I might be disciplined. I might be a pretty good person with my diet and my, my, my spending. But this thing is bigger than me. I realize I need God. And humility is not a bad thing. Number two, empathy. It's terrible when you meet people and they are so strong they've got no sympathy or empathy you, you are sick and, and you are going through a hard time and uh, uh, you, you've lost your job and, and you go to them and, and they say Man, I'm, 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 I'm really going through a hard time and, and they start telling you scripture and they start quoting God is not giving us a spirit of uh, timidity but of power and of love and of a sound mind and, and they want to pray with you and they put their hands on your head you feel like strangling them because that is not what you want 
But when you are going through a hard time and you draw near to somebody who's got empathy, who's been through it too, and they tell you, I know exactly how you feel because I've been there myself. And they put their hands on your shoulder and they pray the same prayer. The tone is different. The same words, but a completely different spirit and meaning. Empathy. When you go through adversity, it bears in you empathy and humility. The third thing is teachability. We somehow decide that we need to learn a bit more. You don't know it all. And we discover that adversity is a teacher. And it teaches us more about life than we can learn about or, or learn out of books. This passage is often used for guidance, but it's actually speaking about adversity guiding us. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 20 and 21. It says, although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. In other words, when you've been through trouble, you, you know what right or wrong is. You know what to really do with your life. You, you, you will have drawn so close to God that you will know what's right, and, and it will do something in you that comfort can do in you. Number four, it means that God is trying to produce something in my life. Whenever you have adversity, God is trying to produce something in your life. And the enemy doesn't want it. That's why he's coming against you. God will always produce things in your life through his word. The Bible says the sower sows the word very important parable in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Let's look at verses 14 to 19. It says, The farmer sows the word. Some people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed, sown in rocky places. Hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others like seed sown among thorns hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Look at verse 20. It says, And those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, sixty, and a uh, hundredfold. So, we read the promises of God. We get a word from the Lord. We are inspired by the Bible. We step out to start a business, to start relationships. We live our lives large. We don't live them small. But guess what? When you want to step out on God's word, you find the enemy is quick to come. Because he knows God is going to produce something in your life. I want to encourage you. You need to be filled with the word. And when the enemy comes and attacks your life and, and, and uh, punches your life and, and cuts your life, you shouldn't bleed self-pity. You should bleed the word. You should be so full of the word that when the enemy attacks you, all that comes out is the word. But the devil knows that when the word is sown, that's the key to growth in your life. So he comes immediately against it. Look at, look at verses 16 and 17 again. Of Mark chapter 4. It says, Others like seed sown on rocky places hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no roots, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. That means adversity comes. First the devil comes, the adversary. Then adversity comes. 
we have that which come from the parts of our hearts, that which come from the parts of our life. The devil comes from outside. Our own adverse thoughts come from the inside. Adversities always arises when great destiny is about to come. When God is about to produce something, adversity precedes it. And we need to stand guard. Why does the devil want to steal the seed? Because it's easier to steal seed than to steal a tree. You know that if you can steal it while it's still vulnerable, it's got a good chance. But once you get into it and you stand on it, you've got a tree in your life when it comes to healing. You've got a tree in your life when it comes to giving. Some people tell you not to give during times of adversity and hardship because you don't have enough. That's the last thing I'm going to do. That is when I need to escalate my giving, expecting a harvest from God. But when you allow those people to influence you, that is when you convince yourself not to give. And adversity takes away what God is about to produce. Adversity proves your relationship with God. It, it gets you to a place where you have to rethink. And we need to welcome adversity because it shows that God is working in our lives. And we need to pray and stay close to Him. Adversity, listen, achieves in us something we cannot have happen on a clear day and smooth sailing. There are some things we, 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 we are only going to learn in the University of Adversity. It's your response to adversity that makes or breaks you. You need adversity to grow. Those troubles, those hard times, that pain can produce something wonderful on our inside that cannot be produced any other way so if you want to be strong in character you want to be ready for anything here's how it happens trouble comes your way that's how it grows you number five it comes to challenge and establish our true identity when you have adversity it comes to challenge identity and it helps us establish who we really are when you have adversity, the enemy is not attacking what you are doing. He's attacking who you are. Because who you are is more important than what you do. Who you believe you are is going to determine your destiny. Let me give you an example. You decide you are going to open a business. You are going to go up in life. You are going to take on a higher level position. You are going to aspire and study. You are going to embark on bigger things in your life you are going to get married as soon as you step out you are going to buy yourself a brand new car and it's going to be a model or make that's way beyond what you've ever had you know what arises up on the inside of you this word you i know you i know where you come from and all the stuff about our past you know comes up to challenge identity and if confidence can be broken, destiny can be wounded. And what we need to know when we are in adversity is this, who we are in Christ. I'm heading into a good future. I'm moving up in life. I'm going to be driving a better car. I'm going to be living at a different level because of who I am in Christ. It's not my works or my merit. It's because God loves me and it's on my side. And because the principles of the word works and I know the Savior and I know the person of Christ and I know the principles of Christ and because of that my life is moving forward and you establish who you are in him when Jesus was being baptized an interesting thing took place let me backtrack for a moment when Jesus was a little boy he was working in his father's carpentry shop he must have been known as the apprentice. Whenever anyone came to visit Joseph, Jesus would go, Good morning, can I help you? Are you here to see my dad? Just hang on a moment, I will call him. But very soon he realized that he wasn't going to be a carpenter. There was something more in his identity. So he goes into the water and is baptized by John. And the heavens open. And let's read what the voice said 
in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Notice, immediately after identity is established, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. It says, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. That's an understatement. You know, some of you, after missing breakfast, you are hungry. It says, the tempter came to him, verse 3, and said, and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Verse 6, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Adversity. Destiny is unfolding. Now there's adversity. Identity was being challenged, because identity is the key to destiny. And adversity always comes to test and also to establish. You can either fail the test and fall apart, or you can go on. I know who I am. I'm not who I am because of my money. I'm not who I am because of what I've achieved. I'm not who I am because of my position. I am who I am in Christ. And I know God has got his hand on me. And I know that my future is good. And I know that I've got a lot of gifts and talent. But because of God's grace, this is where I'm heading. And no matter what you say about me or to me, or how inferior I feel on the inside. I'm not going to let this thing put me off the best things God has got for me. Number six, it indicates our entry into a new season. You are about to go into a new season if you are going through hell at the moment. Let me encourage you. Keep going through hell. Don't stop. And don't fight it. Recognize, hey, something good is coming. Because whenever you're about to enter into a new season, you'll find that adversity is escalating. I want to give you some Bible examples so you understand that this is a biblical principle and you can recognize it in your own life. You remember when God was about to take the children of Israel out of Egypt? The scripture says that Pharaoh started to escalate their workload. Got them to make more breaks. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 69, it says that that same day, Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer going to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That is why they are crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so that they keep working and pay no attention to lies. They were beaten with more force and treated badly because he knew that they were about to become new people. They were about to leave one season and enter another. And so adversity precedes that. And God judged Pharaoh and they came out and went into the wilderness. The wilderness was not their final destiny. They were meant to go into the promised land. When they were in the wilderness, they were about to go into a new season. And what did God use? The Amalekites. The Amalekites came and tried to wipe them out. So much so that Moses gets so weary from the battle that his arms start dropping. Aaron and Er lift up his arms and they support him and they trust God and they defeat the Amalekites. Why? Because they are about to go into a new season. And adversity comes when you are about to enter a new season. David and Goliath. David was about to become a famous man. But he took an adversary, an enemy. He took adversity. You will never get promoted into the next season unless you go through adversity. Adversity is your promotion to your next season. You should welcome it when it comes. You shouldn't fight it. You should agree with it. You should settle matters with it. 
you should say thank you very much. I know where I'm heading. God is about to produce something in my life. And I'm about to enter a new season and leave an old season behind. The end of one season, the beginning of something new. And this enemy presents himself in Israel. is quaking in their boots. And they are looking at this great giant. David looks at him and says, we are going to do this baby. And he knocks the giant down. And he goes from zero to hero. He goes from singing to two sheep to having thousands of women sing about him. Talk about a transformation. Talk about entering a new season. It required an enemy to get him to the place that God intended. Maybe what's happening to you today is indicating that there is an end of one season and the beginning of another. Joseph. Do you remember when Joseph had a dream? He knew that his destiny was going to be awesome. But what did it take to get to the destination? The dream. It took adversity. The first step of adversity was his brothers. They came along. They threw him in a pit. He probably thought, oh, wow, this is dreadful. I just had an amazing dream. But this was the promotion to that dream. Now he ends up in Potiphar's house after being sold to the Ishmaelites. And he gets put in charge of Potiphar's house. How amazing is that? I can imagine him. He's walking around. He's talking. If my brothers could see me. Yes, I proved them wrong. In charge of Potiphar's house. Everything is in my hands. The wife has even got an eye for me. My life has improved. And he could have wanted to stay there. But guess what? In order to get out of that season to the next season, in order for destiny to unfold, there needed to be adversity. So Potiphar's wife comes. And she grabs hold of him and she tries to sleep with him and had to leave his clothes behind and guess what adversity he ends up being unfairly accused and he ends up in prison but it's god's plan adversity always precedes destiny and he never would have become the prince of egypt if it wasn't for adversity it always indicates the end of one season and the beginning of a new season or of a new one even in the life of jesus christ he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. And when he was up there, he saw his destiny. Moses and Elijah appeared to him. Bible says he was completely transformed. He became white because the glory of God came on him. And he saw his future. I'm going back to heaven. Where I came from. I'm going to see Moses and Elijah. And I'm going to be with my father. I'm going to be at his right hand. Sin is going to be dealt with. But guess what? Straight from there, he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and is in agony because adversity always precedes destiny. And destiny always indicates the end of one season, the beginning of another. Maybe today you are listening to me and you know you are having a hard time. You know what it is? It's the end of a season and the beginning of probably the best season in your life. Number seven, it shows we are going to be greatly used by God. Whenever God is about to use you greatly, Adversity will come to prevent it. We need to recognize it. Welcome it and not fight it. You cannot be all God intends you to be if all you dealt with is small adversity. Jesus and the disciples, they are going across the lake in a boat. They are about to go across and deliver a man. They are going to be greatly used by God. He's going to be delivered of demons. The demons are going to run out of him and into the pigs. And the pigs are going to rush into the sea. And the man's life is going to be transformed. Guess what? A storm comes up. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 37. He says, That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along. Just as he was in the boat, there was also other boats with him. A furious squirrel came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. The storm was an adversity to prevent destiny. It's adversity to prevent them used by God. Look at chapter, 30, uh, chapter 4 verse 38. It says, Jesus was in the stem, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? 
he was asleep because he knows adversity can prevent destiny. When you are going through adversity, don't ask the Lord, don't you care? I've been tithing. I serve in the ministry. Please don't go there. You are about to be greatly used. You need to welcome it and press through. Don't let it put you off. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.